Masks are back on in daycares across the state for children as young as two. This renewed mandate is meant to cut down on COVID cases among kids. As 13 Wham's Tyler Brown reports, one day in, there's already been an impact. Tyler? That's right, Doug and Jenny. I spoke to the director of a daycare in Hilton today who says some parents are already pulling their children out of daycare because of this mandate. It's Jackie Ranzenbach's son's Easton's first day at daycare fully masked. Ranzenbach says it's been a struggle. He refuses to wear it. He pulls it down. Um, it doesn't fit right on them. Um, I, he already does have asthma on top of it. So to get him to wear a mask all day long, him running around, breathing issues, it's just not okay. Michelle Smith is executive director of TLC Adventures in Hilton, where Rezenbach's son attends. She says keeping masks on kids two and three years old is difficult, and it's adding to the stress of staff and families. I had several children come in in tears today. I have had several families come in in tears. Smith says five parents pulled their kids out of daycare today because of the state mandate, and she fears even more could be coming. I, I'm scared to lose the business that our owner worked very hard for to establish. I'm, I'm scared to lose my families. I don't know what the future holds. It's a different story at Falone's Fun Time Center in Rochester, where masking has been a requirement for all ages for more than a year. The owner believes with time, kids as young as two can adjust. You know, when you're working with children of all ages, anything is a challenge. So um, it's all in the learning and how you present it and making it fun. We feel that it really has cut down on the germs and the sicknesses. For some, the question is whether the mandate is practical for the younger children. I think a compromise could be maybe four and older, and, and we can explain it to them. We can work with the parents. And I feel that two-year-olds can do it. We're doing it. I know it. <laughs> so they're doing it, and they're happy. Healthcare staffing has the attention of local leaders. Contingency plans are in the works today. A joint announcement from Monroe County Executive Adam Bello and the leaders of both local hospital systems is expected next week. Good afternoon, I'm Doug Emblidge. And I'm Jenny Ryan. This comes ahead of the September 27th mandate for healthcare workers to be vaccinated. It has caused an exodus of workers. As we hear from 13 WAMS, Natalie Kutchko, some healthcare workers say the shortages are growing worse. Natalie? With the statewide vaccine mandate set to take effect in under two weeks, some questions still remain as to how local hospitals will execute that requirement. Now, we spoke with an adult care nurse in taking on more work here in Rochester. As he says, more of his colleagues put in their notice. Mark Donahue is an adult home care provider through Rochester Regional Health. Typically, he'll visit five to six patients per day. Lately, though, Donahue says he's been taking on more work. I frequently pick up weekend shifts like Saturday mornings to try and do an additional three or four visits to take the load off uh, other people if possible. Um, and that's and again, that's, an, that's more overtime, which I think is more taxing on my company as well. Donahue says for a nursing team typically staffed with a dozen people, it's down by three to four. An existing staffing shortage made worse, he says, by the COVID-19 vaccine mandate for healthcare workers in New York. The next few weeks, I think, are going to be very difficult. I go by kind of my own mandate. My One of my, my scheduler asked me the other day if I could pick up and get another visit during the day. Um, and that would have been seven or eight. And at that point, I, I had to say no. I have to take care of myself, too. During a COVID briefing Thursday, County Executive Adam Bello addressed these growing staffing shortages. Am I concerned? Of course I am. Right now, we have healthcare workers working throughout the systems that are working 24-hour days. They're working around the clock to make sure that our, that our patients receive all the critical health care that they need. We have an obligation, the rest of us as a community, to do what we can to get them back to normal and give them the resources they need to do their jobs. And the only way to do that is to vaccinate. As a result, Donahue says his team has already been notified about a likely reduction in services they'll be able to provide. When the mandate goes through, we are no longer going to be able to, we may no longer be able to provide uh, evening coverage. They're looking into ways to solve that, but um, that's hard. Now, Adam Bello announced today 91% of workers at Strong Memorial Hospital have already been vaccinated, 87% at Rochester General, and 79% at Monroe Community Hospital.
Again, we do not know what will come out of next week's announcement, but Bellow did mention hospitals are, quote, still sorting through legal issues. In the newsroom, I'm Natalie Kuchko. All right, Natalie, thank you. In an attempt to prevent further strain on hospitals, local health care leaders are urging people to get their flu shots now. Several clinics have already begun. This one at the Rochester VA. Doctors say you don't have to wait between getting the flu shot and your COVID vaccine. Both can be administered at the same time, something doctors urge, especially because you can contract both diseases at once. They're both viruses, so sometimes sometimes the viruses kind of like compete each other. COVID is far more deadly than the flu. However, people still die of the flu. People still people get in, you know, require hospitalization and uh, and prolong hospital stays with the flu. So if you can prevent any of those things, it's always good. Last year, flu activity was unusually low as a result of COVID precautions like masking and social distancing. So today, Governor Hochul said the state will fight a judge's decision that temporarily blocked the state's mandate requiring that health care workers be vaccinated by the end of this month. That mandate, set to take effect in less than two weeks, is already making it harder to find a local nursing home bed. 13 WAM News has learned there is a growing list of facilities not accepting new patients, out of concern that they soon won't have enough staff to care for them. It is the biggest worry right now for people who run long-term care facilities. They want their employees to be vaccinated, but they're already short-staffed, and they know some workers will quit rather than get a mandated shot. I think everyone's planning for the worst and hoping for the best, so we all have our fingers crossed. At the Livingston County Center for Nursing and Rehabilitation in Mount Morris, they are accepting new admissions on a case-by-case -case basis. It's not that all their beds are full, but there are dozens of current openings for certified nursing assistants. Roughly 100 staffers out of 350 are still unvaccinated. The Livingston County Administrator hopes the state will modify its mandate to allow unvaccinated workers to be tested so they can keep their job. I think that could be a very measured approach, a very balanced approach that's not Neanderthalic thinking. It's very you know, public health oriented, but it also protects the systems that are in place that are really supposed to be there to protect the people that are in these facilities. In a story on 13 Wham last week, the CEO of Thompson Health showed us the war room where leaders meet each day to deal with a worsening shortage of workers. Mike Stapleton oversees both a hospital and a nursing home. I have 16 patients in those inpatient beds waiting to get into a nursing home because the nursing home beds don't exist because so many people have consolidated nursing home floors and have even closed large, large nursing home facilities. It's just a domino. I think all of us, as we're looking at these workforce shortage issues, they're not getting better. They're only getting worse. And with the mandate of the vaccine and people, more people leaving the workforce, there is no one coming behind. 